The GNOME desktop environment. Many love it, many don't, but it's undeniably one of the most mature desktop environments that strives to push the Linux desktop further by embracing their own design philosophy that tries to unite all possible workflows and form factors into one standardized look and feel. And while not everyone agrees with their decisions or how they handle their development process, their latest release GNOME 49 does hold many improvements that you don't want to miss out on. Let's get into it. This video was made possible by channel members of our community. If you want to participate in selecting new video topics, see what's going on behind the scenes and gain access to various tips and tricks, then please make sure to check out the join button or the link in the video description down below. Let's start off with the most notable changes. The GNOME lock screen has gained some additional and in my opinion long overdue features. When listening to music or just having a video open in the background, you now get media controls without having to first unlock your desktop. A very nice addition for laptop users that frequently lock their screen in a classroom setting or if you're using your device in a more public setting in general. What was also missing up until now, something that I came across myself was the absence of power settings like shutdown or reboot. It is a more minor thing, but sometimes you just want to power off your device without having to unlock your screen first. A small but nice adjustment. The quick settings in the top right now feature the Do Not Disturb feature, making it way more accessible than being located in the notifications drop down menu. It's essentially a full mute for alerts. Thought I should mention this since not everyone seems to know it. What I also really appreciate is that they finally implemented brightness controls on a per monitor basis. It's a feature that not everyone uses, but for certain setups, like in front of a window due to table placement restraints, having the brightness control available is a really nice bonus. On the more technical side of things, GDM, the login manager of GNOME, switched to Wayland by default, dropping X11 completely, just for it to be switched back just before release, because there were some issues getting modern X11 sessions to start properly. For your understanding, this has nothing to do with running the GNOME shell under X11, because the shell no longer supports it, but other desktop environments that use it are being loaded properly again. GDK4, the underlying toolkit of Lipid Waiter, so essentially every application that looks like this, received a couple of enhancements. Most noticeable, improved natural scrolling support, improvements to clipboard handling and support for Wayland CDV10, a fancy way of saying how Wayland handles input devices essentially. The summarization of it all is, it works better now. For HDR and art or design enthusiasts, Matter, GNOME's compositor, extended its support for color calibration and ICC color profiles for your monitor. You usually get an ICC profile for your monitor model from the manufacturer, and it is basically a correction filter that gets your monitor to mimic colors more accurately in contrast to other models. If you have two monitors that look slightly different, an ICC profile for each monitor can help match them. And now with GNOME 49, it works better than ever. Then of course you get the usual improvements, like better fractional scaling, Wayland improvements, but also a fix for a problem that I have been anticipating for some time. They finally fixed the mouse data problem when using variable refresh rates on multiple monitors, which finally allows me to use it properly again. Also huge thanks to the KDE team, since their implementation was a good reference. Let's move on to software. The GNOME Software Center now shows past updates for distros that use RPM OS3 like Fedora Silverblue and Basite, and always shows system install flat packs. Papers, a new document program, replaces events, making the whole PDF viewing experience a lot smoother, but still limited in terms of editing, and support for legacy tray icons was improved. Wait, what? Legacy tray icons are back? Before you get all excited, these changes just apply for the sort of official extension that is maintained by GNOME, not actual tray icon support out of the box unfortunately. The calendar app received minor polishing, mostly changing the placement of some elements and their visibility. The GNOME Connections app, a lightweight program to connect to other desktops, has gained support for the SPICE protocol, which is often used on remote Linux hosts to connect to, and the GNOME remote desktop integration now supports extended virtual monitors. Overall speaking, some really nice changes. Alright, so GNOME 49 is a more or less minor update. So let's talk about the stuff that's still missing. Variable refresh rate support is still behind an experimental flag, which is unfortunate since it works pretty well. And now with the multiple monitor issues fixed, I wish they would enable it out of the box since it's quite useful for laptops. Many also find GNOME's push to Wayland premature, as even Ubuntu would like to still keep it around for a bit, out of compatibility concerns, and they are not wrong. 
Wayland is in a difficult spot, whereas many programs have not fully transitioned over. Some may never do it, and X Wayland is working pretty well where it can, meaning that there isn't really an urge to push it as much. In my opinion, for the average user, Wayland support, especially on GNOME and KDE Plasma, has been incredible so far, and it is ready for the masses. However, some concerns are definitely valid, especially when it comes to Nvidia. Touchy subject, but someone has to push and maybe even abuse their reach to kind of force the hand of those that are intentionally being slow. Unfortunately, this also has an impact on smaller projects, so it's a two-sided knife. Whatever, someone has to do it, and both KD Plasma and GNOME are doing a fantastic job in implementing Wayland, despite some of its quirks. So overall speaking, GNOME 49 is a minor release in terms of obvious features that end users might notice. But if you look closer, it's again a release packed with many refinements, better performance, reliability, huge jumps in HDR support, and many of the new core apps might land in stable distributions very soon, making the whole GNOME ecosystem even more streamlined. Many don't like this narrow design, and that is a valid concern. However, tastes are subjective, and for my part, I really like where it is going currently. Maybe the changes at some point, or maybe the design philosophy of GNOME also changes over time. Libet Waiter and GDK4 do have a lot of potential after all. But anyway, that's it for this short GNOME 49 recap. So what do you think of this release? Is there anything in there that made you excited? Do you even use GNOME at all? Please let us know in the comment section down below. Before I end this video, I quickly wanted to mention that if you want to support the channel and make even better videos, then please feel free to check out our membership program as well as our online shop, whereas each sale helps to support various open source projects. If you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future Linux videos just like this one. And without anything more to add, all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.